were founded in 1969 by Bob Moore, who was head of the English department at St. John's School in Houston. I taught at St. John's for a year in his English department. And then at the end of the year, he resigned. He was tired of being at a school that purported to be training the future leaders of the city of Houston. And there were no minority students whatsoever. And he said, uh, you know, uh, there isn't any reason why children from different circumstances can't get this kind of education. So when they get to college, they're ready. And so he got some funders together, a major gift from the Brown Foundation, and started a school with 16 seventh grade boys out on the harbor. And we've been in business since then. Our mission is to take able and motivated students from poverty and prepare them for college. We do this with a rigorous college preparatory education. We do this with our motto of quid pro quo, something for something. And we also have a big emphasis on community service. Currently we have 146 students, about 82% are Latino, and then about 12% are African American, the remainder being Asian or white. And 80% of our students always qualify for free or reduced lunch because that is our mission and we don't stray from that. We serve grades 6 through 12 and we have boys boarding for grades 7 through 12. Unfortunately, we haven't had girls boarding yet, we're hoping to, and at least not on a large scale. We've had small scale girls boarding. Our operating budget is a little over $2 million a year. As you know, our tuition is minimal. Most of our kids pay an average of $50 a month. It's based on um, income on a sliding scale. But that's about $400 a year per kid and it costs about $14,000 a year per kid. So we have to make up that difference. To get into Cinco Penitza process, you have to go through testing. And once you pass your testing, you'll get invited to come attend a week of school during the summer. That's when you kind of get a feel for Cinco Pen, And that's when teachers kind of realize the student you are and your capabilities, your strengths, your weaknesses. And then they're evaluated by the faculty and by some of the students. So they really have an insight on how much these children want to do well at a place like this. As long as they see that you're working hard, they will admit you into the school and then you can start your years at Chinglefin. I came to Chinglefin to escape my neighborhood, really. I've had family problems and then so I came here as kind of like that refuge. When I found out about a school like this, where it kind of took you away from your neighborhood and kind of put you in an environment where other students were interested in pursuing a college career path, I was all for it. I do believe that it's because of the boarding program that I am so prepared for college. Since she's been here boarding, her GPA has gone up a whole, a whole point. Before I lived here, it was really hard to make time for schoolwork and bouncing out home life. And here it's like, okay, I have all this time, it's scheduled. I have teachers that are available to me and whatever opportunity. We now have faculty members that actually live in the campus. We never had that for the first 30 years of the school. They actually live inside the dorms. For the boys that live on campus and the girls who will soon live on campus, we're their family away from home. At my old school, they were teaching you because they had to. We're here, the teachers teach because they want to. They want you to have the education to go to college. They're always there for students, even if they come home, they can always call and ask for help. Right after classes, they have study hall. Teachers were here, which is wonderful because as a parent, we don't have that facility and we don't have also the education to help them as the teachers can do it. We're there for the students. We're able to provide tutoring in the afternoon and in the evening. Living in the dorms has really provided the opportunity for me to get to know them on a different level and become a different person myself. Your family is like what you make of it. And so Chingapin became my family. The students at Chingapin are unique because they are so highly motivated. Our students really reach out to others. They'll shake hands, they want to get to know you, and they also want to tell you a little bit about themselves. I think these kids are all genuinely interested in learning and they really care about the school and, and care about their classmates. You're here because you want to better yourself, you want to go to a great college. Because of all the hard work, Chinkupin actually shows you that you can handle it and that you can succeed in greater things. It's shown me how much I can push myself before I break and when you know your breaking point, there's much more that you can accomplish.
quid pro quo is a really big part of our lives. Quid pro quo is basically giving something for something. We get education so that we could go to a four-year university, and we give back by keeping our school clean. But then something special happens a few years later because you graduate and you have a degree or you have some sort of sustainability and you give back to mentor or you give back to teach or to coach or if you can, you give back philanthropically. It's like, why wouldn't I want to be here involving quid pro quo in my life immediately? It is who we are and it builds a love for the school and a respect for the school and that feeling of family and community. The thing that makes me feel good about what I've invested in this school is the success of the students. 85% of our graduates go on to graduate from a four-year college, and that's unheard of. If you compare that to any public school district in the country, we are light years ahead of everybody else. We really prepare the kids to be academically successful, but then also successful as human beings. Our kids have gone to MIT, to Harvard, to Bryn Mawr, to Smith, to Rice. UVA, Notre Dame, A&M, UT, you name it. And they're really everywhere and they're excelling there. That's what makes Chinkapin different from other schools, is that they teach us that you gotta bring it out of yourself. Like no one's gonna do it for you. And it's because of that that we're able to succeed. I really measure the success of Chinkapin by looking at the alum and the ways that their lives have changed. Not only do they give back to the school, but they're also very involved in their communities. I am so grateful for what Chinkupin did for me and helped me that I've come back. I just want to give to students what was given to me and that gives me motivation every morning to, to do what I do. We have a lot of fantastic supporters here at Chinkupin who help the school run. Without them, we don't know where we'd be right now. There's a lot of ways to volunteer. You can call in, you can go online, and you can talk to our development director. Whether that support means coming to an athletic event or you know, providing us with some financial assistance, you're really going to understand the benefit behind it because you'll see what these kids are capable of. I love Chicopin because the students love the school, the faculty loves teaching the student, the staff loves the students, and they love working here. I love Chicopin because of the students, how hard they work, how motivated they are. I'm grateful for Chicopin because it showed me things about myself that I would have not discovered otherwise. Chinkopin helps you become a leader, not only in your school, but also in your community. When I didn't feel I deserved any more chances to have that great advantage and opportunity, they showed me that I did, and they gave me that extra opportunity and push to continue moving forward. I want to major in civil engineering with a double major in either English or history. I want to major in acting. Either international relations or politics. I either want to become a doctor or a psychiatrist. I actually think I want to come back here and teach. I want to be a general surgeon. I will actually be the first in my family to go to a university. When our students graduate, they're not just pulling themselves up out of poverty. They're bringing their whole family with them. And so they work extra hard to do that and to give back to the community that nurtured them. They have given people that second chance. And those people are willing to take that second chance with as much heart and as much motivation as they can.